guys, so it's been a while since I've made a video of uh, my SI here, and uh, mainly because it's been like, you know, zero degrees in New York for the past couple months. But it's like 50 degrees out today, so I decided I'm gonna make a video, and the topic today is, you know, you've seen this car on my channel since, you know, 2012 when this channel was started, and on my previous channel since 2010 when I bought it. So the car I've had for eight years now, I just wanted to point out my reasoning and my thoughts behind, you know, why I stopped modifying this car. As you know, if you've been following my channel, I supercharged this car back in 2014, and since then I have not done anything more to the uh, to the power for this car. It's been running the same exact setup for the past four years, and uh, it's the exact same tune that I got tuned on four years ago. And the engine, the supercharger, and everything in that system there has had zero issues, and I've beat on it consistently, and I've ran it hard, and it doesn't care, because the main point behind this setup was to make it reliable and daily drivable, and so nothing would go wrong. So when the question gets asked, why did I stop modifying my car here, is uh, it's really three main reasons that I'm gonna go through with you guys. The first one is I'm happy with it, and the setup is perfect to me. My original intent with this car was completed, and I haven't gone any further with it because I feel that it's exactly what I wanted when I went to modify this car. The second reason is because there's a lot of costs. It takes a lot of money to get this set up, but if you want to continue to build this setup from the point I'm at, it would take over $2,000, just estimated more, to do it reliably and safe. And I'm gonna go through that in detail with you guys to explain why there's such a big price jump to get another 20 to 30 horsepower out of this setup. It just doesn't seem worth it to me, and my intentions with the car aren't to set any records. So I'm extremely happy with the way the car is now, and it's gonna stay like that. And the third reason is I acquired a third car, a uh, second race car, if you will. I got a Honda S2000, and that car is so much more fun to drive, and it's really deserves my money now for modifications more than this car. I've got this car where I want it to, and I'm keeping it garaged, I'm keeping it clean, keeping the miles somewhat lower on it, and you can't really find many 8th gens out there nowadays that are in such good shape. This car has barely seen any winter at all, so it's been stuck in my garage, you know, for the past five, six years, has not even seen any salt. So to elaborate more on my first reason of why I stopped modifying this car, First reason was I'm happy with it and the setup is awesome to me. So I'm running a Comtex supercharger kit. Uh, the blower is untouched, it's original from Comtex, it's not ported. So my Comtex kit's not just a standard Comtex kit you get off the shelf. I was able to modify it a little further and get more power out of it to make the car a little more exciting. Now the car, as a lot of you have seen on my channel, has ran a 12.8 at its best and a track 111 miles an hour. So that's kind of the number that was the most significant to me. I don't really care about the dyno numbers about this car. I just really wanted a trap speed over 110 because I consider, you know, any car that traps over 110 in the quarter mile is a pretty quick street car. So my original goal with the car when supercharging was to run a 12 second pass on uh, basic street tires, which I did. I did uh, 215 really old street tires. Um, and to trap over 110 miles an hour. So I accomplished both of those and I'm completely happy with the car. So just to keep going on the setup quickly, it's a Comtech blower, three inch blower pulley from Fit Viper. The crank pulley is actually stock. So this blower makes about nine pounds to 10 pounds of boost, depending on the air temperature and the density of the air and everything like that. So the Comtech blower is fitted with a J37 throttle body from an Acura MDX V6. Uh, it's got an adapter plate to make to Fit Viper's uh, big bore inlet for the supercharger. I had that all mated to a three and a half inch hybrid racing cold air intake, which actually fits the supercharger very well with a larger couple inch supply. And uh, in addition to that, I have a after cooler kit from Fit Viper. That was all purchased as one package deal back in 2014. I was actually one of the first people in the US to have this after cooler kit. And it hasn't given me any issues in the past four years. So in addition to the supercharger and everything I just talked about that's up front here, I have a uh, NVIDIA V2 race header, and the V2 doesn't have a flex pipe. The early models of the NVIDIA header had a flex pipe that was prone to cracking and leaking over time. So this actually has a donut gasket version 2 header with a full race 3-inch exhaust. The NVIDIA header makes 
pretty much perfectly to the full race three inch exhaust. The, the flange on the Infinity header isn't like the Skunk 2 or anything. It kind of it tapers up nicely to a 70 mil and then it goes to the 76 on the exhaust. So the transition is very smooth and very nice on the setup. Um, and the quality of the Nvidia header is, is second to none. I mean, you look at that thing and compare it to a Skunk 2 header, it is light years ahead in quality for the actual build quality of it. And the raw materials and the welds on the Nvidia header uh, blow the Skunk 2 Alpha away. So enough of all that, that's the setup. Uh, I didn't include the Boomba engine knobs. Those were actually rebuilt by Boomba. Uh, probably 2,000 miles ago, so they're still like new and they still vibrate the car pretty well. They do a good job of keeping the engine pretty sturdy. So if we must talk numbers, the car did make 341 wheel horsepower on a dynamite roller dyno, but like I said, you, you see a lot of numbers thrown around on YouTube on, oh, my car makes this, my car makes this, which one's faster? It, it, numbers, dyno numbers really are in, insignificant in the end of the day if you're just trying to go for high numbers because every dyno reads different. In my opinion, the only number that really matters with your car is the trap speed. So to build on my point with uh, my original intentions of this car, to get it over 110 miles an hour in a quarter mile, I got it to 111. My main focus behind doing all that was to do a setup that was extremely reliable and not a pain in the ass to run. So I'm running lower boost on this. There's lots of cars online that have more than 9 PSI or 10 PSI pushing with this blower. This is actually a very conservative setup. And I did that because I didn't want to overwork the blower. I didn't want to generate too much heat. I wanted it to stay reliable, not overspin the blower. Um, and the after cooler works great at these RPMs, the blower spinning. Blower spinning about 15,500 at redline in this car. Um, so there's, ca there's setups online if you increase the crank pulley, you can get 15 to 16 PSI out of this thing and spin the blower over 18,000 RPMs. It's gonna reduce the life of the blower pretty significantly, and that's not what my original intention was to do. I didn't wanna set any records in. I just wanted to make a fun, fast car that I, I could enjoy and uh, find an ending point to not dump more and more money into it. And I'll talk about that in my second point. So to summarize the first point, really, this, this car is awesome. I mean, I love the car. It's such an awesome car just to drive around town get 35 miles to the gallon with this on the highway, and then you put your foot down and you know it, it lights up the tires whenever you want really. So I've been very, very happy with it and it's been very reliable. So my second point, um, the cost to increase the horsepower on the setup more without really changing the blower. There's a lot of newer kits out these days that use a TVS blower, a 1320 and 1900 TVS blower that you can put on here. It nearly doubles the size of the factory Comtech blower if you get a 1900 and you can run much higher boost and lower blower speeds and make a lot more power very easily. Those weren't available back in 2014 when I put this kit on and actually after the Vitatune after cooler just came out when I was starting to put this kit on. So back then this was really the best option for a root style blower Civic Si. But anyways, to increase the horsepower more out of this setup, I'm sure you've seen many YouTube channels online that are running more horsepower than this car with um, with a Comtech blower. So I know there's channels out there that guys are trapping 120 miles an hour in a quarter mile. That's nine miles an hour faster than my car. That's a huge difference. But the money it took to really get to that point is why I stopped. Um, this car, I wasn't trying to go to the drag strip every week with it and set any records. So to go through kind of a list of what would need to be done to increase the horsepower more on this setup and do it reliably is, first thing you're gonna run into is transmission issues. I've already had a transmission issue with this car. I shattered the OEM diff, the original trans in this car. And this, this car now has a transmission from a 2009 Civic in it that was fully rebuilt before I put it back in the car. Um, so I was able to break the OEM diff at uh, 340 wheel horsepower and nine pounds of boost with this car. So if you were to go higher and higher, you should really do a, some upgrades to the transmission. That can get pricey really, really quick. I mean, you're, if you want to do a, a gear set in it, you're talking over $2,000 long just to do, you know, one through four. I'm still running the OEM gear set in this car. The transmission shifts like butter now. It's pretty much brand new, low miles on it. So besides the transmission, there's a lot of other things too you got to consider. If I were to add a bigger crank pulley to this car, uh, and I can possibly spin the blower to 18,000, and you're really working hard at that speed. It's, it's really crying at that speed. So it generates a ton more heat. It becomes more inefficient the higher you rev the blower. You'll get 15 to 16 PSI out of it, but you're only gonna pick up 
20 to 30 more horsepower. So if you change the crank pulley and spin this faster, you really, when you run those boost levels, you really want to be safe and do a fuel return so you have all the fuel pressure you need at all times. And that there runs over $500 and you have to really modify your fuel system quite a bit to run a fuel return in these cars. I'm still on the factory fuel lines and everything. All I did was a drop in uh, Deutschwerk's DW65C pump and it's held up great. So after noting the fuel return addition to make this reliable at higher boost levels, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be forcing a lot more hot air into the engine, you're gonna be overspinning this. Your factory after cooler is gonna be working, but it's, it's not gonna be working as great as if you were weren't spinning the blower as fast. It's gonna be, you're gonna be getting hotter intake air temps. So when you're running 15 to 16 PSI too, you should really consider switching over to E85 to get a higher octane fuel through the engine. You could run pump, but the timing's gonna be so delayed that that's gonna restrict your horsepower as well. As I like the car now because I'm not running crazy boost levels. Um, at nine pounds of boost, I can go to the, the, any gas station, pump 93 in it and be done. And the car runs consistent every time. E85 is a, a tricky fuel because the alcohol content in it varies whatever time of the year you get the fuel. If you can get the fuel local to you, that's a pain in the ass too. But where I live now, in the Hudson Valley, New York, it's definitely not readily available and the damage it does to your, your, your sending unit, your, your fuel gauge is going to stop working and it's going to corrode all the components through your fuel system a lot easier since E85 will attract moisture into the system if you're not careful. So in addition to those things, another thing that's known to fail uh, on this car when you start spinning the blower faster and faster is there's a groove and a uh, smooth idler pulley on the Comtech factory bracket. So these two bearings have issues when you start to overspin the blower and the way I have it right now is I'm running a stock crank pulley so the belt speed is no different than it was in a naturally aspirated SI. The water pump, the alternator, and everything in that whole system is still seeing the same RPM as it was when the car was stock. So the reliability of those components is, is most likely going to decrease if you run a larger crank pulley. You're going to be spinning the alternator faster, you're going to be spinning the water pump faster, and that causes more and more inefficiencies with the setup. So these two pulleys are known to fail um, pretty commonly. There's lots of replacements on them online. And each, each one of these is about $130 to replace. So. Uh, if one fails, it's not just like a trip to the auto parts store and a replace it. It's kind of a, a larger expense, in my opinion, to replace these. But I, to be honest, mine are original with the kit. Uh, I bought the kit used too, so these are the original bearings and I haven't had any issues with them. They hold up to the abuse just fine. So that kind of explains why the whole setup I have right here is, is somewhat reliable. So another thing you have to do as well you're going to increase the boost levels on this car is change out your map sensor. I'm running the actually the factory Honda map sensor that came with this car. They say it's rated to about 10 PSI. I'm, I'm right at 10 PSI on a cold day with this car so I was able to retain the stock map sensor and not have to spend an extra hundred dollars to get a Honda Data one or a, an aftermarket MDX uh, map sensor. So that's another expense you got to add on to. And then the main expense I really have been wanting to avoid is getting a retune. Uh, if you ever change anything on your car ever, you should always get a tune. And I'm talking like not a base map tune, I'm talking a real tune by a reputable tuner to your car to, to address all of its characteristics and mods. Um, so my tuner has been Vit Viper for this car since I was naturally aspirated, since I was supercharged. I've been running the same tune since 2014 on this car. So it's been great, it hasn't given me any issues. The car runs great, gets great gas mileage, and has a lot of power when you put your foot down. It's very responsive. So I know his prices have gone up a lot lately. Um, I think it's about $350 now, maybe more, to get detuned by Vit Viper. So the fact, when you start adding up all this stuff, you know, you gotta do, you should really do transmission upgrades, you should do, you know, you gotta get your map sensor, you gotta do the crank pulley, you gotta do a fuel return, you gotta do a retune. You're, you're well over two, three thousand dollars of parts to do it reliably. So that's why I stopped where I did. The car is very quick in my opinion. It's not gonna set any records. There's a lot of cars that are faster than it out there. And I'm just happy with the setup. It's a really fun car to drive and it surprises a lot of people. So my third reason to be really quick, I know this has been a long video, is I bought an S2000. That car, uh, when you hop in it and drive it, even when I drove it in stock form, was a lot more exhilarating to drive than this car. Even, you know, this, this car is probably making almost double the horsepower the S2000 is. Something about the nimbleness of the S2000, the fact it's rear wheel drive, the engine revs to nine grand, and the gearbox too. The gearbox in the S2000 is light years ahead of this one. And the gearbox is just so amazing in the S2000. If you haven't driven one, I definitely think you should. 
So the S2000 has been getting all the love lately because it's a lot better platform to, to build on about what my future intentions are with cars. I really am getting involved now with uh, competitive racing that's not drag racing. I really like doing the autocross events and you can actually, you know, I like the competition of it where you have 60, 70, 80 other cars you're running against and everyone's going balls to the wall trying to run the fastest time around a course where you're not just going straight. And I also am going to be doing some more track days this year with that car. I like doing open, fun track days, working on my personal times so at the New York State safety track I plan to go to, maybe Watkins Glen if I find some extra money. The S2000 has definitely been a fun, fun car and we'll be getting a lot more upgrades. Stay tuned this year for my videos because I have a lot of parts sitting in my basement for the S2000 that are going to be put on this year. It's going to substantially change and improve the, the way the car is performing for my intentions this year. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed this kind of video. Uh, I haven't done one that's been like this really in the past, so I'm going to try something new. I'm going to be posting as much as I can, um, but don't expect a vlog like every two days from me. I'm just going to be doing a lot of videos of the S2000. I'm going to be pulling the blower on this and inspecting it to make sure everything's okay since it's been four years. So I got a lot of videos planned coming up. Definitely subscribe if you haven't. Give me a like, uh, drop a comment, and um, let me know what you think. If you agree with my logic here, leave a comment and say it totally makes sense of what you said. And uh, you know, there comes a point where there are certain people on YouTube that are, do get happy with their cars. You know, There's not many YouTube channels that are out there where people have kept their car for eight years, since basically since it was brand new, and modified it, and then you know, stopped modifying it and enjoyed it for like four years. There's people that are always doing more mods, more mods, more mods, and I am, but just not to this car anymore. I'm doing it to a better platform. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a good one. I'll see you next time.